Great Britain's 303 inch short magazine Lee Enfield rifle was largely the outcome of complaints about the Lee Enfield magazine rifles and carbines during the Anglo Boer War. Criticism was mostly about not having charger clip loading, the rudimentary sights, and the overall length of the rifle. These shortcomings became more obvious as the Lee Metford and Lee Enfield were pitted against the Boer Mauser in the hands of experienced marksmen. So the Lee Enfield barrel was shortened by 5 inches to 25.2 inches and a charger loading guide was attached to the bolt head. This became the magazine Lee Enfield rifle Short Mark I, better known as the SMLE or Short Magazine Lee Enfield. The new short rifle replaced both rifle and carbine, standard for all branches of the armed forces. Enfield referred to the five groove concentric rifling developed at the Royal Small Arms Factory Enfield Lock in 1895 for the new 303 Cordite propellant. This new rifle model in 1903 offered a longer sighting radius than the carbine along with a reduced weight and length over the long rifle. Other improvements were a safety catch mounted on the action body, finer adjustment back and front sights, and a nose cap that incorporated protectors for the foresight. In England, production commenced around 1904 at the Royal Small Arms Factory Enfield. Large contracts were awarded to the Birmingham Small Arms Company and the London Small Arms Company as well. A pedal scheme of subcontractors also saw some SMLE rifles made by the Standard Small Arms Company in Birmingham during the Great War. The initial SMLE model was designated the Mark I. Some obsolete long rifles were converted to a Mark II pattern, which to all appearances looks like the Mark I. Then a few years later, fitting a butt trap, a recessed butt swivel mount and a deeper magazine case resulted in the advance to Mark I Star. SMLE rifles have the factory, year and mark designation stamped on the right side of the action body at the butt socket underneath the closed bolt handle. Converted rifles were marked on the left side of the body as the original designation marks were already on the right hand side. In 1907 the SMLE Mark III was introduced with a solid one-piece charger bridge riveted over the boltway of the action body. It also had front and rear sight improvements along with recently modified furniture. Production commenced at Ishapur in India in 1909 and then at Lithgow in Australia in 1913. These rifles are marked with the factory name in year on the right side of the receiver at the butt socket in a similar style to their British counterparts. Manufacturing economies in 1915 resulted in the approval of a Mark III star. This dispensed with the long-range dial sight plate and pop-up rear aperture behind the safety catch, as well as the magazine cut-off plate being omitted. However, some SMLE rifles made after this date may be noted with provision for the magazine cut-off. These were mostly special orders, such as for the Royal Navy. India's Ishapur factory continued making the Mark III until the 1930s, before advancing to the Mark III star. The advance to Mark III star did not always conform with definite patterns. It was more of a wartime transition in order to speed up production. A comprehensive description of the different Australian, British and Indian production will be found in the big 2007 edition Lee Enfield book. An SMLE model made after the war with a folding ladder aperture sight was called the Mark V. However this was limited production run at Enfield between 1922 and 1924 and this model never went into service. Most appear to have been sent to Ireland then surplused. In 1926 British small arms nomenclature was changed from the Mark and Star variation to a number Mark and Star designation. 
So the SMLE Mark III became the rifle number one Mark III, while the Mark III Star became rifle number one Mark III Star. This system was applied to bayonets, pistols, other small arms and related stores as well. So the 303 rifle became rifle number one. The 22 Rimfire Lee Enfield trainers were designated rifle number two. And the 303 pattern 1914 became the rifle number three. During the Second World War, the number one rifle continued to be made at BSA Smallheath in central Birmingham, although German bombing caused production to be dispersed and different factory markings may be noticed. Production of the number one rifle continued in Australia and India with the final Lithgow batch in the early 1950s and at Ishapur in the 1960s. The SMLE mark and factory stamps are found on the right side of the butt socket under the closed bolt handle as mentioned previously. Most of the parts will be noted with inspection marks, factory or subcontractor stamps which can help to learn the history of a particular rifle. Country or state ownership as well as unit issue markings are usually found on the right side of the butt or at the top of the action body receiver ring. As time went by, particularly from World War I, unit issue markings were not stamped so often. The ideal reference book for markings is the Broad Arrow British Empire Manufacture Proof Inspection, Armourers and Unit Issue Markings. The SMLE serial number is found stamped at the front of the action body on the right hand side of the barrel nox form underneath the rear handguard as well as on the rear face of the bolt handle, on the nose cap bayonet boss at the muzzle, also stamped on the back of the rear sight leaf and on the underside of the forend near the nose cap. Not all of these parts were so numbered at the factory but it was done by stores, armourers and ordnance repair depots so that rifles taken apart for one reason or another would be reassembled with their original component parts intact. Proofed action assembly numbers are found on most SMLE rifles. These were marked with small engineer stamps under the bolt handle and on the adjacent face of the action body. The PAA numbers were stamped after proof before the rifle was allocated a serial number during the initial stages of assembly when it was a bare action, barrel and bolt. In some cases where the bolt will be noted with no PAA number stamped underneath, this is obviously a replacement. The particular model or mark of rifle is initially determined from stamps on the butt socket of the action body. In Roman numerals, the Mark I is marked 1 or one star for the Mark I star, three for Mark III, and three star for the Mark III star. The star designation is in the form of an asterisk stamp. The Mark I star was updated for high velocity ammunition and some Mark I and Mark I star rifles were fitted with charger guides to become Mark I II star and Mark I III star rifles. Converted rifles were stamped COND2, 2 star or 4 on the left side of the body, retaining the original long rifle markings on the right hand side. For a better understanding of the advance through numbers and marks, along with the often subtle variations and differences, refer to our small arms identification series and the big Lee Enfield book. For balance, function, operation and endurance, there is little doubt that the Lee Enfield was, and still remains, one of the finest and longest serving battle rifles of all time. Australian Lee Enfields will be noted with small, square shaped copper plates fitted inside the forend facing forward, secured each side with single screws. This was to bed the forend. The copper plates rest up against the recoil lugs of the action body. This was not needed on the harder walnut or teak timber forends as used in British or Indian production. Now the, the bolt system of the Lee Enfield rifle. We lift 
the bolt, pull the bolt back, take the bolt forward, it picks up a cartridge out of the magazine and pushes it into the chamber. Then we push forward, we compress the firing pin spring and close the bolt. Firing, when we pull the trigger, it's a military trigger, it's a two-stage trigger. The first stage, as you, as you pull, pull the first stage back, the angle on the front of the sear, where it sits on, or the cocky piece where it sits on the sear, is at such an angle to make sure that you don't accidentally fire. It actually cams the cocky piece backwards first. Then you take the weight, the sear slips down the front of the cocky piece and fires the rifle. If we have a, a safety a double safety system on the rifle when you engage the safety catch it locks into the cocking piece and stops it from moving and it also locks under a projection on the back of the bolt and it stops you from lifting the bolt now we've got the safety catch off we can ease the spring to a half cock which does basically the same job as the cocking piece. It locks the rifle up. You can't lift the bolt, can't move the cocking piece, can't pull the trigger at all. Now back onto full cock. We can ease it past that, ease it the whole way home. When we put the safety catch on, the same thing again. It, it cams the uh, cocking piece back, takes the weight of the cocking piece off the sear, and it locks the bolt so the bolt can't be can't be open. The 303 British Charger clip holds five rounds to facilitate rapid reloading of the 10 round magazine through the open boltway. German Mauser has featured stripper clip loading well before the turn of the century to the detriment of British and colonial forces in the Anglo Boer War. Charger loading was a prerequisite for the new short magazine Lee Enfield in 1903 and remained a feature of all successive models. Because of the rim base of the 303 case, the clips need to be loaded properly in order to function. Loading your own clips, one needs to be careful that a jam does not occur with a rim over rim as the top round is fed into the chamber. More and more enthusiasts today are taking their Lee Enfields to the range as clubs cater for historical shoots. The club competition SMLE was usually fitted with a heavy barrel and micrometer adjustment aperture sights. The original bedback sight was usually discarded. Shooters, load! Action! Bolt forward! Instant, go on and shoot. 